The world is a beautiful but challenging place to live. And let's face it, life hits hard sometimes. So if you find your hopes and dreams and mental well-being needs a boost, you're tuned in to the right podcast. Welcome to Inspire Us with your host, Jay Paul Nadeau, a former hostage negotiator turned motivational speaker and acclaimed author of Take Control of Your Life. And now, here's your host, Jay Paul Nadeau. Hello, everyone. It comes as no surprise, I'm sure, to everyone out there that I'm a big fan of the audio application called Clubhouse. And if you have been following this podcast, you know that I've put a couple of episodes of our Clubhouse, our Saturday morning Clubhouse rooms, in which I have amazing moderators, doctors, and people from all walks of life who come to pour into other people and help people get through self-sabotage. This is yet one of those episodes, and I know that every time I'm in that room, and everybody says this, we as the moderators, we learn so much from all the great experience that is being poured into this room. You've really got to listen to it to appreciate it. People will come and they will be vulnerable. They'll share their stories. They'll ask for guidance or they'll share some tips on how they got through some difficult times and how they beat self-sabotage. So if you're new to Clubhouse or this experience here, listen in. Even if you're not, every time you listen to it, you're going to get something that will apply to your life guaranteed. So without any further delay, I am going to just, well, here you go. It's another clubhouse room with my great moderators and I. Enjoy. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Michelle. Michelle, how are you feeling? Good morning. Feeling good, just a little chilly. <laughs> What's the weather like there? Actually, it's, it's, it's nice. It's actually nicer outside than it is my, inside my house. It's probably in the 50s. So it's balmy for oh, us. Boy. <laughs> How are you guys doing where you are? Paul, you're in Toronto? Yeah, we're in Toronto, King and I. And uh, it's actually quite nice today. It's supposed to get really warm this week and then go back into winter weather. Um, Robert, we're, um, how are things with you? Weather here today is, is quite nice. We're, uh, they're forecasting a bit of a thunderstorm later today, but uh, temperature-wise, it's quite temperate. And Michelle, um, you know, your heart is warm enough to uh, heat an entire stadium, so I'm not too worried about your house. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's so kind. And there's the other half of my heart there, Dr. Roshanak. Hi, Dr. Roshanak. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonjour, chérie. Bonjour, chérie. Yes, uh, Dr. Roshanak, you have quite the story. You've moved into the United States, I understand. Right? What? Are you here? I was, yes, I was in New York from Sunday until yesterday, and then I flew into Oregon. I love Oregon. Where are you? Yes, I'm here. I'm in uh, Beaverton. I'll be here for a month. I'll be writing my book, and then I'll come back and I'll see you. Oh, Michelle. yes, you will. I can't wait. It's great. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> We're going to run towards each other like in the movies. Yay, <laughs> like in the movies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. So please, I would love to hear what you were saying. We were just talking about the weather, actually, and uh, good morning, Candice. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Candice. Hey, Robert. All right, uh, we're going to get started in just a minute. Thank you very much for joining us, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're in the Take Control of Your Life Club, and today we're talking about negotiating our way out of self-sabotage. So I will get uh, things started in just a moment. Uh, so if you uh, would just uh, kindly just invite anybody that you think might uh, benefit from this room, and then we're going to get started. I'm going to start, uh, I think uh, we'll just give the microphone over to our moderators to introduce themselves. I'm going to turn it over to King, and King, you can pass the microphone on. 
Thanks so much, Paul. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us in our Negotiate Your Way Out Self-Sabotage Room. That happens every Saturday here on Clubhouse at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And um, I do welcome all of you to come up on stage and uh, share any thoughts that you have. If you'd like, just raise up your hand. And of course, we do ask that you do uh, have something in your bio before you do do that, just to uh, for, for us to be able to keep this uh, space as safe as possible. Uh, but of course, if you aren't able to come up and speak, the room chat is open. So just add your questions and comments um, in the room chat, and we will uh, try to address any questions that we see in there as well. Um, and uh, so thank you uh, so much once again for, for joining. My name's King, and I'm a social um, media brand strategist, and uh, you can read about everything else about me in my bio. But uh, with that, I'm just going to uh, hand things over to Michelle to introduce herself and tell you about all the great things that she does. Sorry about that. I was trying to uh, write something in the hallway to invite people in, and I just could not get out. I couldn't escape. I was trapped in a virtual box. Uh, so my name's Michelle Geske, and I'm here uh, in support of talking about this, um, let's call it the illusions we create to create self-sabotage, uh, because we are all extraordinary and magnificent, and we start losing that uh, belief about ourself. And so uh, for the past, I'd call it 27 years or so, I've been working with people uh, and and just sharing uh, incredible conversations with them to support them to break three of, of paradigms and beliefs and assertions that uh, are not necessarily the truth of who they are. Uh, and by doing that, it really helps break the cycle of uh, taking actions or or thinking thoughts that are self-sabotaging. So I'm here to support the room, and I really look forward to a very dynamic conversation today. And I pass the mind mic on to Robert. Thank you, Michelle. And regarding uh, your uh, being trapped and unable to escape, in those circumstances, I always wonder, where is Houdini when we need him? <laughs> um, anyway, my name is Robert Nadeau. I am Paul's older brother. Um, and uh, we're fond of saying that uh, Paul is the good looking one. I'm the older one. Uh, I am a lawyer by day. Um, and I also am an entertainer by night. I'm a mentalist, which is a form of magic. My tagline is magic for the intelligent mind. Um, my background, though, and the reason I'm here, I guess what I bring, I guess, to the table is that I have uh, my undergrad was in philosophy and in particular the history of philosophy and science. I'm also a student, a lifelong student of critical thinking, and I'm currently running a series on critical thinking on my Facebook page for anyone interested. The, read, the reads are less than one to two minutes long. When I come to this room, I come, though, as much, if not more, to learn, and I have learned so much since I've started, uh, since I joined this room. So with that, I will press, pass it over to Dr. Roshnik. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much, Robert. And I absolutely would love to hear more about this critical thinking um, blog or what is it that you have? Can you tell us a little bit more about that for a second? Sorry. Sure. I mean, um, critical thinking in a nutshell is really about um, the necessity of um, questioning our assumptions, never accepting at face value, especially today uh, with a world... <clears throat> A world saturated with media and social media, with n narratives and, and, as Michelle rightly said, the illusions all around us. Um, it's important not to accept just at face value the things we read on, on, on Facebook or Twitter or anywhere and really investigate the sources, question the assumptions, question ourselves and holding ourselves accountable. That in a nutshell. And if anyone's interested, my Facebook, you can look me up on Facebook. I started the series March 29 and I've posted one a day since then. The reads are less than... Uh, are, between one to two minutes long. I hope that uh, uh, answers your question, Dr. Noshnik, and back to you. Thank you so much. I think that's fantastic. Yes, as a scientist, I'm a big fan of critical thinking, and I think it would serve us all quite a bit um, to check that out. So I invite everybody to who's on Facebook to read up on Robert's critical thinking series. That's fantastic. And it also helps us all in, in rooms like this as well. I mean, we have a nice balance of emotions and thought. And uh, this is how we can, from my perspective, uh, powerfully lead our own lives. So hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Roshan Akashman. I'm a computational clinical and behavioral neuroscientist, author, speaker, and founder of Access to the Path, where I am a transformational advisor and consultant. 
and I love being in this room. And with this beautiful Mod Squad, it's um, one of the rooms, and if I dare say one of the few rooms left, that really is extremely helpful. We're not giving out any therapy or medical or psychological advice or anything. We're just here providing information, education, and support. And But it's a, it's a really amazing group of people here that are heart-centered and quite well-educated and experienced because that embodied experience is really important. Uh, for myself, I work with uh, neuropsychiatric patients and I've spent a lifetime studying how the brain informa uh, processes information and uh, how our behaviors are biologically rooted. And so this is where I'm coming from. And I now take that quantitative scientific information, that's quantitative scientific knowledge, I combine it with conceptual qualitative intelligence uh, in order to produce unique strategies that help my clients basically level up to the best version of themselves. They become more purposeful, more fulfilled, uh, more aligned with their authentic selves, if I dare use that terminology, um, and really find a life that is, uh, for the individuals, more uh, fulfilling and allows them to express their best selves so that there is a greater level of achievement which serves all of us. Um, in both cases, when we are more fulfilled, when we are expressing more of our gifts and talents and blessings, then it's a win-win situation for everyone. And as far as the businesses go, um, it's the same thing. You know, we all want to work in a place where there is conscious capitalism, as it were, where we can bring out the best of ourselves to help produce uh, that which others are looking for. In essence, business is a beautiful thing. You know, there's those who seek and those who serve, and they come together nicely as pieces of a puzzle. And we are all seekers, and we are all servers. And so I love this room because it brings us all together in that space and in that way. And I'm very grateful to be here. Candice? Awesome. Thank you so much. And hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here again on this beautiful Saturday, or at least in Ottawa. The sun is finally shining. We had a crazy snowstorm yesterday. Um, and I'm just excited to be a part of this awesome platform. I'm a personal executive coach and business leadership coach. I help leaders and employees with personal and organizational effectiveness in some of the areas of employee engagement, talent development, aligning strategic, strategic priorities and objectives, team performance management, and change initiatives. Um, I also have um, a certification in emotional intelligence, and I put a huge focus on that within my practice. I like to help high performers, executives, and key stakeholders achieving long-desired personal and professional growth while mitigating the risk to, resistance to change. And really, I'm fueled by a passion to help people in the most genuine and authentic way. And I also understand firsthand the importance of being resilient and being an effective communicator. And I'm here today really to learn and support and embrace everyone's unique journeys and hope to add value where I can. And uh, just appreciate Paul and King for um, hosting this room and being on such an awesome platform with the rest of the moderators. And with that, I'll uh, pass it over to Glenn. Well, good morning from Savannah, Georgia. Glad to be here with my fam. Hello to all of you. <clears throat> what do I want to say? Here's what I want to say. I am a Texan who is completely in love with life. And that has been really the cornerstone of my approach to all things. I have a lot I could say, but I don't want to say any of it. I just want to say that I'm in love with life and that that itself has healed any and all ailments, confusions, distortions, um, any sense of uh, being out of balance has been immediately restored by being still and remembering how utterly fascinating, cool, and splendid I esteem this life to be. And I am here to help. I started making movies when I was 15 years old and I'll be leaving the group early today because here I am at 62 still doing it and today is a joyous day to be employed. We rarely shoot on Saturdays but we are on a Tuesday through Saturday shoot schedule right now on the series that I'm doing in Savannah and I am on joyous assignment here for the next six months and I have a beautiful place in the middle of the woods on a lake and I am 
happy to be here. Paul? Well, I was just saying, uh, I, I saw your place uh, the other day um, on Zoom, and it's absolutely beautiful, Glenn. Um, Jacqueline? I was just going to say, Glenn, I'm coming for a visit. So, you know, you can open yeah, those doors. We're, we're coming <laughs> hey. down. The earliest I could accept a visitor would be today. Oh, we're all coming. Excellent. Be careful. I can't. I cannot do it until today. Packing our bags. Excellent. You know, let Be us careful. let us know You're have when shoots done there. for the day. We're coming. <laughs> you know, I I had the pleasure of learning that Glenn and I are from the same neighborhood in his past life. So I'm hosting Glenn for dinner as soon as he comes back to Vancouver, and I can't wait. Glenn, I loved what you said this morning, and it was a beautiful message that I wanted to share. We hosted a room with Neil Donald Walsh, Walsh this week, and his ongoing message is, we're not here to learn, but we're here to remember, and I'm so happy you brought that up. We're here to remember who we truly are, and for me, that's love, and it's what I do in this world. I am the founder of an organization called 365 Give. And even though I didn't know it at the time when I started the project with my son when he was just three years old, I have come to realize and stand in my truth that what I do in the world is taking the love of who we truly are from our heart, putting it into our hands and putting it out to the world. Because when we can stand in that knowing that love will change everything and we can share it with others with no expectation of anything in return, it will be the moment that we get to change the world together and as one. So thank you, everyone. I am honored to stand with all of these remarkable people. And most of all, I can't wait to hear from all of you today because we're here to help each other and we're here to support each other through this life journey. So thank you, everyone. And looking forward to doing what we can to walk this path of life together today. Thank you, Jacqueline, and thank you all for being here and my great moderators for your introductions. Yes, welcome. I'm Paul Nadeau, and uh, King and I started this room just over a year ago, and really, it, it really is to help people get through some of the toughest times. And feel free to come up, raise your hand. We do have a back channel. Uh, you, uh, the messages that you can, you can ask uh, your questions there as well. And just know that the information heard here today by any of the speakers is not intended to be a substitute uh, for professional medical or psychiatric advice or diagnosis or treatment. So if you need help, please seek help, but come up here, ask your questions, and we will help you out. We're talking about negotiating our way out of self-sabotage. In my former career, I was a hostage negotiator, and I used to help people in the Special Victims Unit as well. One of the things that we deal with, um, or several things that we deal with, is the thoughts that we entertain in our minds. And if we can only learn how to negotiate some of those thoughts out of our head, we'd be much better off for it. The definition of self-sabotage, I'm going to start with that, includes to deliberately destroy, damage, or obstruct something. But self-sabotage refers to behaviors or thought patterns that hold us back and prevent us from doing and experiencing the things that we'd like to do and experience. And some of the examples of self-sabotage are blaming others when things go wrong. So we tend to point the finger and say, hey, this didn't work out for me because of this person, that person, whatever, the circumstances. Another one is not being accountable to ourselves or to others. We just let ourselves down or we let other people down. Another one is choosing to walk away when things don't go right and procrastination, feeling overwhelmed can be a form of self-sabotage. Another one is picking fights with friends or partners for no apparent reason. There usually is an underlining reason and that's because we're not being seen, we're not being heard, and we need to be seen and heard. Everybody needs that. Another one is dating people that we know aren't right for us. We go back to the same kind of toxic relationships as before. One big one is uh, trouble stating our needs and desires with family, friends, or at work, or in romantic relationships, or even in uh, everyday interactions with people. That's a big one. Putting ourselves down, those little voices, when we tell ourselves that we're not good enough, I can't do anything right, why does this always happen to me? I won't make it, so why should I even try? Nobody loves me and I'm not worthy. So those are examples of things that people experience in the self-sabotaging world. So we're going to help you uh, to deal with that. And I have wonderful moderators, as you can see and you've heard. So we're going to start off. I want to say that we're going to try to keep the 
the shares to about mm, no more than two, three minutes for anyone coming up on stage. And for our moderators, we'll try to keep it to four minutes to respect your time and to get people up. So please raise your hands, come on up. And I see that ZZ is our first speaker. So I'm gonna turn the microphone over to ZZ. Over to you, ZZ. Thank you, Paul. I love this room and it has so much knowledge. Uh, just take the stage alone as all these knowledgeable people here and with love. And I'm, I'm just saying that uh, to find you and uh, Michelle King and Robert, of course, your brother is amazing as well, Dr. Shasha and Candace. And of course, my favorite of all is Glenn and Jacqueline. So I'm very happy to be here. And what I want to say is sometimes we, as uh, I'm learning that we are all by nature, love and perfection. And the stories we hear from our ancestors or our parents or our teachers are the things we are trying to break because they are not ours. And just to know that they're not ours is something very important. But unfortunately, they are so ingrained in us that we don't know the difference between what's ours and what has been ingrained. But I find that if I start from the premise that I am perfect, created by a perfect God in a perfect universe, so by nature, I am good and I'm love, then I don't think any thoughts that are self-sabotaging would be mine. And I would have to question that they are imposed upon me by somebody or something, not to blame them, but to go inside and take responsibility and deal with it. As the grand would say, get on with it. So the fact that we know it has been imposed doesn't mean that we don't take responsibility, even for just being there and allowing it to be imposed. So that's what I'd like to share is to believe in ourselves that we are love that we are perfect even in our imperfection like imperfect perfection doesn't mean that i wouldn't have a disability or i wouldn't be on a wheelchair or i wouldn't be able to move but being a perfection of the divine soul that we are breathing divine breath and living in a perfect world is the question not the physical body so much. The human experience is, is the thing that sometimes traps us and makes us believe things that are not true about our nature. So thank you for allowing me to share. Well, thank you, Zizi. And uh, always uh, you have something valuable to share with each and every one of us. Uh, does anyone want to add something to what Zizi Yeah, Paul, I just wanted to mention you can go ahead and dismiss class now. Zizi has said it all. We can go home. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, anybody else? No? Uh, Jacqueline? I just, yeah, I just, Zizi, first of all, my sister, I just want to say good morning and I love you. You know, I, I wanted to remind everybody what a beautiful example Zizi is for us all. For First of all, she shows up here all of the time. She holds so much beautiful, loving space for so many people every day through the gratitude room and shows up as that beautiful example that you don't have to be perfect, that even having a disability, being in a wheelchair, your age, she represents all of the things that so many of us beat ourselves up about when life is so much easier for so many people. And Zizi, I wanted to just thank you for being that beautiful, shining example that it all comes back down to love and loving ourselves and who we are. And as Michelle always says so perfectly, good now and being in that now moment. So thank you, my sister, for showing up for all of us and being that shining example that we're never done and we have a full, beautiful life to live. So thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you all. Thank you, Glenn, for your nice comment. And thank you, Zizi, for coming up. I'm just gonna tuck you back into the audience, but uh, please, uh, anybody who has anything to share or to ask, raise your hands. We don't have too many people on stage right now, so this is a great time to come up. Tazy, welcome. How are you? Good morning, everybody. I'm good. Um, Thanks for having me yet again. I just, um, oh yeah, I gotta watch the timer. 
I just, uh, these last two weeks have been grueling and decisions were made that incorporated highly complex variables. And I, I stepped over a couple stepping stones and I, Paul, I'm sorry to just go on and on about your book, but it really helped me get out of my head this last two weeks and get back into nuts and bolts and dealing with the present tense and what actually is real and what actually is based on fear. I just listened to that audible recording and it just was, it was really helpful. So um, that's, I'm just going to say it again. So what I found this week, last week it was, you know, I'm the main player in my own life. So I stopped comparing to other scenarios that weren't going to happen and that aren't my life. And last week I really accepted I'm my first responder. Those were my two big ones from last week. This week, surprising because I've trained myself away from these negative thoughts that are horrendous and that do keep me trapped amidst all the stress the fear was just running these negative thoughts of tremendous tragedy and situations. And when I finally connected it to fear and I looked at it, because I have this thing that I do, when I get a thought that's um, horrible, then I stop and I say, okay, no negative thoughts, let's replace it. And I actually systematically replace those negative thoughts with positive images. So the negative one, for example, the fear that my sister would get out of this facility where she is. She gets tremendously aggressive when she's in episode, which she isn't anymore, but she hadn't, I hadn't seen her yet. And uh, my fear was, oh, she's going to run to the wash. She's going to get completely brutalized, blah, 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 blah. So I replaced that with one of the workers at the facility, finding her and walking her up the street and me finding her and holding her hand and walking her back in. So that's an example of that. But what I found was, and I see that I'm close to my three minutes, I'm really proud of myself because I'm going <laughs> to stay within, is that the, the thoughts that were really holding me hostage, these terrible, fearsome thoughts, I, it, once I pulled back and recognized them as fear and looked into present tense, which now I'm a huge fan of present tense and moment by moment. Um, it helped a lot. And there was one other thing, and that was the looping thoughts that I, I came to a decision, weighing out all the variables, and it was a good decision. And then it started looping. Did I do the right thing? Did I do the right thing? Did I do the right thing? And when I accepted my decision as the best of all, possible decisions that I could make at this time, then that looping stops. So those are my two big wins for this week. And thank you for your book, Paul. It's a classic. And I can't tell you how much it helped me this last week. And guess what? Three and a half minutes. All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you did awesome. And thank you, Tay-Z. I, I so admire how you are now just challenging those voices in your head and you're you're taking control of your life which is exactly what we want you to do and everybody here so yeah you're just an amazing example of how we can do that um any one of my moderators want to add to this beautiful uh, conversation with tay -Z? jacqueline good morning my friend wow first of all i want to tell you how proud i am of you um because you know, Paul may have us each on a timer, but I've never timed your shares. And I want to tell you how absolutely proud I am of you. I think so many of us understand where you're coming from, that we get stuck in our own heads. And I'm hoping Dr. Roshnak may um, feed off of my comment on this, because I struggle with this with my own son, that he, you know, we we have this beautiful ability with our brains that we can literally imagine something in our head, something negative that may happen, and we get the physical reaction just from our imagination. And that can be good or bad. So I heard you so much when you said, you know, I could see this negative experience happening to my sister and the worst case scenario that could have happened. And I experienced this as one of my kids on a regular basis. And he just loops in the negativity and what could be and the what ifs and the 
oh my God, you know, down the road, you know, what's life going to be like? And you really showed me today how I can work with him as well to continue to, how do we reprogram that thought that we're thinking? How do we switch gears? How can we even use our imagination as a beautiful tool to picture something else? So I wanted to thank you because you're doing it. I'm so proud of you. You know, you come up and share every single week with us and your growth. And I'm so glad that's coming from Paul's book. Paul, I think you should link your book to the top here. Um, I'm so glad that you're getting so much out of that. And you just coming and sharing with us is our beautiful reminder. We can all do the same thing. So thank you so much, Taisy. Wow, thank you so much for that. And Taisy, thanks for uh, promoting my book. Uh, uh, Dr. Roshnak, uh, did you want to add something? Yes, uh, as Jacqueline requested. So what's going on here is, is called catastrophizing and or rumination, depending upon the level of it we're talking about. So the idea that um, when something happens, let's say you're going on a, a first date and it doesn't go well, instead of thinking, well, okay, that, that didn't go well or that person wasn't for me, um, or we weren't a good match uh, in increasing order of, um, I think, supportive ways of thinking and beneficial ways of thinking. One can say, nobody's ever going to love me. I'm never going to find the right person. I'm always going to be alone. I'm going to die alone. You know, and this is the catastrophizing, taking one thing and then uh, going into a bad place with it and taking that far out. And we, you know, people do that. This is nothing abnormal, um, but we can do better for ourselves and for each other. And so, as I often say, we have up to 60, 70,000 thoughts per day, with about 95% of them being repetitive and about 80% of them being negative. And this is rumination, and it occurs in the brain, in the particular areas of the brain, um, is part of the system that is active when we are awake and at rest, unfocused on a task. And in one of the areas of the brain, which these sort of ruminating thoughts occur, and also depressive thoughts, um, there's a, a another area that works in tandem with that. So just like we have the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system that are responsible for our stress and rest states, so sympathetic is the stress state, as it were, the rest state is the parasympathetic, and they work in tandem with each other, then we also have areas in the brain like that. And then the area that works in tandem with this uh, one particular area for rumination and depression uh, is for considered thought. So when we start to get into that looping, into that rumination, into that catastrophizing, we can use our logical executive function, as Robert was talking about before, and think about and present to ourselves the logical considered thinking, considered thinking instead of the runaway thoughts that are just coming and coming and coming and looping and looping and catastrophizing and so on and say, well, I understand that this is one person, one date, and this wasn't a good fit. We weren't a good match. And journaling also helps with that. So there are different ways that we can counter those thoughts and that way of thinking, which is perfectly natural, but doesn't serve us well and can take us from, you know, a good place into a very bad place, or we can pull ourselves and put ourselves into a better place by intention. So this conscious awareness, this intentional way of thinking, this directing your brain, standing guard at the gate of your mind so that you are not a slave to your mind but rather your your brain is the tool that you are using well because you know how to use it and having this information also allows you to know how to use it so the journaling the considered thought the intentional thinking the logical the critical thinking all this that can bring us into a better state that can pull us out of those negative states and that can keep us from, of course, the, the purpose of this room, self-sabotage, um, the intentional or unintentional ways that we can um, harm ourselves mentally or otherwise, that we now take away and say, I know why this is happening and I know what I can do about it. So now we're empowered with different strategies and tools to improve ourselves, our condition, and live our best lives. 
Thank you, Dr. Roshnek. Uh, masterclass right there. <laughs> and uh, Tazy, did you want to uh, respond? No, just thank you all for um, being there each week. I feel like I'm in a master seminar and you're my seminar group. <laughs> so thank you so much. I really appreciate you all. We really appreciate you as well, and I feel the same way. Every time I come into this room or open this room, I'm just learning something every day. So thank you so much, Tazy. And uh, I'm going to ask King to reset the room before we go to our next speaker, Rania. But I also want to introduce uh, Jeremy uh, and Pete and Eleni, who have uh, joined us. So uh, we're going to go to the room reset first. Over to you, King. Thanks so much, Paul. Um, yes, thank you so much for everyone for joining us for the Negotiate Your Way Out of Self-Sabotage Room. Uh, of course, this room happens every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and uh, has been going on uh, since uh, January of last year. So thank you so much for everyone helping to make this room a success for us. And of course, this room is hosted by the Take Control of Your Life Club. So if you aren't already a member of the club, make sure you tap the little greenhouse above my head and become a member. That way you'll be notified whenever we do run this or other rooms uh, and uh, that way you won't miss out on all the amazing conversations and insight that are shared in these rooms and uh, of course if anyone does want to join the conversation with either a question or a comment I do highly encourage you to raise up your hand and come up here on stage um, but of course if you aren't able to uh, sh sh speak to us uh, on stage uh, obviously the room chats are also open so you can leave your questions and your comments there as well and of course we do always try to keep these rooms uh, no longer than about two hours. So definitely, if you do, are you if you are on the fence about thinking of co coming up on stage and speaking, I would encourage you to raise up your hand, uh, hand up uh, sooner rather than later, just to make sure that you do get it in. Uh, in the queue here to make sure that you are heard uh, this week and of course you know even if you aren't you know if your thoughts aren't fully formed just just yet that that's all right you know you have some time when you come up on stage to think about what it is that you want to uh, speak about and of course we will help you you know uh, guide you along that process as well if you you know if, if you are still a little bit uh, sort of unsure about exactly how to ask your questions we can definitely help you with that so don't be shy come on up uh, raise up your hand um, and I do ask that uh, anyone that does want to come up on stage to speak to make sure that you do have uh, a bio written out and ideally a social media account attached as well just so that we know that you are an actual person not a bot uh, that's here to disrupt the uh, stage because we do try to keep the space as safe as we possibly can and uh, for anyone who is new to coming up on stage just remember that your microphone is live the minute you come up on stage and so just remember to mute yourself uh, until it is your turn to speak and of course on stage for the speakers we, we will take everyone in PTR order and for the obviously for the moderators it's popcorn style so uh, whenever you do have something to add uh, definitely feel free to uh, to jump in and of course you know finally we do, we do always you know remind everyone that uh, the connections you make here on Clubhouse and the rooms that you visit form so much of your experience here on Clubhouse. So, you know, take a look around the room. You know, you can obviously start with my amazing moderators up here and read everyone's bios. And if you see someone whose story resonates with yours, give them a follow, you know. Um, you know, once again, in the audience, look to your right, look to your left, look beneath you. You know, there are so many amazing people here on this platform and they'll only serve to enrich your life and enhance your, you know, experience here on Clubhouse. And if you're going to spend time here, you might as well make it the best time you possibly can. And I also encourage you to get to know them off the platform as well. Take a, you know, follow them on Instagram, follow them on Twitter, because once again, Clubhouse is here now and it's fantastic. But for whatever reason, should Clubhouse not be here in a few months, you don't want to lose contact with all these amazing people. So definitely make sure you have another way of staying in touch with them as well, because I definitely know I'd be sad if I lost contact with the amazing friends I've made here on uh, Clubhouse. And so with that, I'm going to hand things back over to Paul to keep us going. Okay, thank you very much, King. And yes, please do follow my amazing moderators. You're going to really get your life enriched by, by following these wonderful people. I want to, before I go to Rania, um, Jer Jeremy, are you available to give an intro? I certainly am. Good morning, everybody. Happy to be here every single Saturday. Um, I actually am in the process of rebranding myself and and re-enjoying part of the process of being a little bit more open on social media and to the point where I was doing a TikTok live last night and I hadn't been on there in over a year and all of a sudden 140 people are in there hanging out 
And I was like, holy crap, I haven't done this in a long time. And I'm on there, and all of a sudden I get a phone call, and it's, and it's from El Salvador, or it's an agent. And I looked at it, and I kind of looked at the camera, and I was like, you guys want to watch me get a job live? And they're all like, sure. And I might be taking my next job and my next contract in El Salvador to go play basketball and continue my career. And they got to watch the, the negotiation live uh, with one of the agents, and they were just like, this is so rad. And, and, what, and just what a cool experience. I'm not sure for 100% that I'm going yet, um, so don't – now to anything because my mom finds out through social media I mean, she's gonna kill me uh, she doesn't know yet. <laughs> but uh but uh, it's just it's just been such a pleasure to to find a more smoother way to incorporate social media into my life without having it be stressful and that's kind of happened recently uh, with some interviews with podcasts and a lot of things that i've been doing and just the pleasure of giving back and loving people is astounding to watch what happens so if you're on in this room and you're having a little bit of difficulty getting started or having some traction, understand that loving people is the ROI and it always will be like when I'm in a room with Paul and Pete and other, and these other people and Dr. Roshanek, that is the ROI that I see with them. And it's an ROI that I've always seen win with me. And it's so cool that the world has gotten to a place where kindness and lovingness is actually the part that's winning the most. So happy to be here. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. We're always happy to have you here. Michelle, did you want to say something or were you just applauding? I'm just applauding. I just think it's fabulous, Jeremy. And I just, I hear so much enthusiasm and passion in your voice. So it's contagious. So <laughs> it is. And thank you, Jeremy, for uh, joining us. Pete, uh, are you able to give it an introduction? Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for what you said, Jeremy. But big thank out, big thank out. I've never said that before to Paul and King uh, for just being awesome uh, just give them a big mic flash guys um you know this has to be one of the best rooms on clubhouse right i think that's why we're in this room <laughs> this collection of just people who care people that want to give and uh it's funny because what i notice about the more and more i spend time on clubhouse is that the people that stick around are the ones who can continue to give in a way that serves them and that's why i'm here so uh, I'm known as the the people's coach. I'm the author of 20 books. I have been coaching people for 30, 30 plus years now, which I still can't believe because I still feel like I'm about 20, but I'm actually 52 next month. And I just love helping people build a relationship to their future self. I really loved what um, Dr. Roshanak was talking about, rumination. I think it's just one of those incredible things that human beings do that we go over and over and over things. And we don't realize sometimes what's actually going on. And it does take work. You know, this is the thing to, I think it takes work. I'm, I might be wrong here, but to, to be able to work it out, to be able to see what your mind is doing and uh, to believe or to know that maybe you're more than your mind. In, in Buddhism, there is a word called uh, dukkha. In Hinduism, it's called maya. And it's this kind of, it re they refer to similar concepts around the nature of the mind. It, it can play tricks on us. You know, we can be walking down the street and think someone's behind us. We can, we can be trying to go to sleep at night. And, but rumination is fascinating when you work with someone that can help you understand why you're doing it. Because I think there's always a reason for it. And once you become aware of the reason, you become aware. And that's why Clubhouse is so amazing, because so many of us are becoming more aware of things that we didn't know. And with that awareness, we then have the power uh, to change in the right environment. So thank you so much. Uh, Paul and King and Michelle and everyone else in this room because uh, look, it's just a pleasure to be here with you all. So thank you. I'm done speaking. Thank you, Pete. Uh, I can't believe that uh, you've written 20 books because I wrote one. Uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm on my fourth, but uh, my first one took me two and a half years. So um, <laughs> 20 books, man, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing uh, and thank you for being here. Uh, I see that Eleni is on the phone, so I'm going to go over to Rania. Rania, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. Over to you. Are you there, Rania? Maybe she is not at the moment. So we'll come back to Rania. But Murray, good morning, Murray. Well, hi, Paul, again. Are you getting bored seeing me all oh, the time? Oh, heck no, <laughs> never. <laughs> good morning, everybody. I... Um, I just have a quick share. I I really am so grateful for this room. I, I think I'm here every Saturday. It's like, oh, I got to get up, got to go to my room. But, you know, Paul, Michelle, Glenn, Eleni, I pronounce it 
incorrectly, Pete. Hi, Pete. Doctor, I call you Doctor uh, Doctor R all the time. Doctor Rushenock, and my darling Jacqueline. Thank you, Jacqueline, for what you what you mean and what you do and what you stand for in my life. Um, Jacqueline knows it. I've been feeling a little, um, shall we say, I contracted shingles. Okay, fine. But fortunately, everybody, I had my two shots, so I'm not going to get that nerve damage and I didn't suffer as much. But the point I want to make is, and Paul, I am, I just um, wrote down because I want to get your, your book, but I want to get the audio because I love to listen in bed. So I'll, I'll be getting that through Amazon um, maybe later today or tomorrow. But anyway, being that I've been feeling like this, my friends, um, I've done a lot of soul searching, self reflecting, and I love what I see. Uh, did I feel sorry for myself at times? Well, yes, I did. I'm human. And my people who were very close to me didn't belittle me. They said, Mare, you're feeling what you're feeling. Feel free to express. And thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, feel free to express what you're feeling. You're hurting physically, and it's causing some mental. I've, I, I could go out at a couple auditions. Uh, t today I'm making 48 egg halves, uh, deviled eggs for the homeless that I'm serving tomorrow. And the, the head woman we're serving 100 feet, 150 people. She already knows she may get a call from me that I'm not well enough. But you know what? I'm going to be. I just put it in my friggin' mind that I'm going to be. Am I weak? Yes. Have I been a little down? Yes. Have I been a little depressed? Yes. But I have tools. And my tools are this room, the gratitude room and other rooms. And I just want you all to know, and I've mentioned your names, what you mean to me. And thank you for some of you who've contacted me during this time and helped give me faith and know that I love myself and I'm not feeling sorry for myself and that to give me the freedom to admit I'm hurting, I'm in pain, this hurts. It's okay to admit that. You know, we all try to keep up there. Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, that's bullshit. Say how you feel. That doesn't mean you go into a well of feeling sorry for yourself. We all have tools. This room is a tool. My, my spirituality is a tool. My law of attraction is a tool. My meditation is a tool. But at the same time, when I'm hurting and I'm a little down, it's the love that I have received from so many of you here. And I thank you. And Paul, thank you for always bringing me up. And thank you for letting me share. And Glenn, you are so loved and admired. Your words are like jewels to my ears. Thank you, everybody. Happy Saturday. And say a little prayer for me so that tomorrow I can serve the homeless. Thank you, everybody. I am, I am uh, gratefully complete for the moment. Thank you, everybody. Murray, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to go over to Jacqueline uh, before I share. But Jacqueline, over to you. Murray, thank you so much. I'm hoping the wind is not too loud on my ears right now. I'm running as we all spend this time together. Murray, I wanted to thank you because in your words, a little um, bell went off in my head. And I was having a conversation with somebody this week about how sometimes we don't need to try and instantly fix everything in our life. We don't all need to stand here and fix everything for you. But the fact that you're becoming so aware of your emotions, how you feel, allowing them and allowing them to go through you, I hear the change in your voice from the beginning of the week. It's remarkable. But I think in allowing our emotions, it is our human experience, no matter uh, what we try to do our spiritual self a, a funny comment came up in dr roshanak's room yesterday morning in clubhouse conversations and it's about spiritual saran wrap and how sometimes we wrap ourselves up so much in our spirituality we try and bypass our humanity and the beautiful thing about what you said is that you're allowing those emotions to be there but also run through you and then have the tools to make that change knowing that it's possible and most of all i want to thank you for your service to the world because it's always remarkable and what i know about giving is that it helps switch flip that switch for us all it's why we all stand here because we get to be of service together to everyone here 
uh, and grow together. And in that, that increases our personal happiness. It lets the love flow through our body. And I wanna celebrate you for that. Um, but most of all, just thank you for allowing and then allowing your emotions to go all the way through you um, and then turn it around for yourself because that's the biggest lesson for us all here right now. I love you, my sister. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, honey. Thank you. And thank you both. Uh, and Marae, it's always a pleasure to have you here. I love what you were talking about, just disputing those voices that come into our heads. It's so important. Um, Martin E.P. Seligman wrote a book called uh, Learned Optimism. And in that book, he talked about what Murray was talking about. The A stands for adversity. Whenever something happens to us, the adversity that happens, we take it in. And the B is we attach a belief to it. We're meaning-making machines. And so when something happens, we automatically try to attach a meaning to it. Dr. Roshanak uh, talked about this just a little bit earlier. You know, like the date didn't go well, so I must not be this, I must not be good enough, whatever. We attach a, a belief to the adversity that happens or to the setback that happens. Then the C is for the consequence of that belief. I must not be good. I'm not going to try anymore. So we attach a consequence often to that. But the D stands for disputation. And that's when we have to stop, take a deep breath and say, no, this is not who I am or this is not going to define me. My circumstances are not going to define me. I am going to take control. And so the A, adversity, the B, that belief that we attach to it, the C, the consequence, but then we have to dispute. And thank you, Murray, uh, for always showing up and for sharing. We really appreciate you. Um, does anyone want to add anything? Murray? No, just thank you. I was applauding you. <laughs> I was applauding you, Paul. <laughs> thank you. Robert. <laughs> sure, thank you, Paul. And thank you, Murray. Um, there, when I was listening to your share and uh, what really uh, – occurred to me what 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 came to mind for me at least was this this notion uh, if i filter it through my my sort of my critical thinking um apparatus is that this is really kind of the accountability imperative uh, in action um because <laughs> the uh the first branch of of uh of accountability is um being uh, accountable to ourselves you know account uh, it's easy for anyone to um, hold other people accountable. We do that all the time. You know, we, 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 uh, it doesn't take genius or, any, or anyone being skilled in critical thinking to hold others accountable. We just do it naturally. I mean, we always want to hold others accountable. But to hold ourselves accountable? Uh, that's a different. That's a different thing. So the, the so what I was thinking was that you know the first branch of of the accountability imperative, at least in 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 my framework, is that you know accepting responsibility for our actions, uh, taking ownership of our mistakes, uh, being accountable for our results. Um, and when I was listening to you, that's exactly what you were doing. You, you acknowledged, uh, you, you, first of all, it was awareness and, and self-perception. And uh, uh, I'm not a psychologist, I, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not my field, but um, I thought, you know, here's someone who actually has turned the spotlight on herself and has identified that who she is, she's human, she's, she's, she's growing, and, and she's got the courage and the strength to say, okay, you know what, I'm not there yet. I, I've got all these spots in my life, but I'm not there yet, but I'm growing and I'm maturing. And it's through the disciplined practice of critical thinking that we acquire a seasoned and, and mature awareness of our all to human limitations, our weaknesses, uh, as well as our strengths. And uh, um, uh, it's only then I think that we can begin to hold ourselves to account. And that was a beautiful share. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, well, Robert. Thank you, that, Robert. Was that was a massive task. <laughs> thank you very much hey, for that. Hey, Paul. And uh, Glenn. Yeah, could I say something? Because I'm getting ready to walk out my door and head off to set. And um, may I offer something here? Always, my friend. Always. So just a thought that I, I believe in my deepest heart of hearts will help everyone in the room, no matter where you are is there's an expression that I made up, I've used it my whole adult life called chronic opinionitis, and it is a human condition, uh, whether it's serving you or not, favorably, 
Uh, so it, it seems so crystal clear to me that human beings form opinions and then they go about the business of proving themselves to be right regarding that opinion. So the opinion itself becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, you know, life's just that way, for example, is a classic opinion. Life's just that way. Life is, and then you fill in the blanks. Life is wonderful. Life is unfair. Life is whatever. And then promptly set out on course to build a case to support your postulate. And so since you're going to make stuff up about life, I don't mean it's false. I mean, you're going to make stuff up. You're going to make a decision. It makes sense to me and always has to make a decision about things that empower life because I know what I'm going to do is prove those decisions to be right because that's what human beings do. We prove ourselves right regarding whatever opinion it is we hold. And if someone wants to hold the opinion that life is a great big dog poop sandwich and every day is another bite, trust me, they will be successful in their campaign of proving themselves to be right about that. The problem is it doesn't feel good. And the problem is it disempowers life. It makes this journey here a burden and it makes it rough and it is all self-created. We can arrest that bad habit and stop and ask this question. What do I wish to decide is true about life? Because we can build a case for anything. I really believe that. Someone that is holding chronic negativity can stop if they are coached properly and assisted to realize you can be just as right as you are about your negative opinionitis. You can be just as right about positive things by simply shifting your focus. Where we place our attention expands. And when we place our attention, look, it's not as though life is in short supply of goodness. It isn't. It's brilliant. Life is brilliant. It has so much to offer us. It is nothing short of miraculous, and it continues with its campaign of miraculousness, whether we are noticing it or not. Every day is miraculous. Are we going to notice that? Are we going to focus on the things that are a little bit off and allow those things to consume us? I'm Glenn, and I'm done sharing. Have a magnificent day, everyone. It is available for you to have. Come on. Oh Can I share? Come on. Come on. Love you. Can I share into Thank that? You, Glenn. Um, I only apps, I, I, I've had to take a, um, a call from my girlfriend in Los Angeles. So I just came in on um, the incredible, um, enlightened, uh, beautiful Glenn's little bit of um, giving there. And I just really want to, even though I don't know what the discussion was the day before or the minute before, for me, life really is about living. There is abundance absolutely everywhere and magic to us. If we have tragedies in life, they're not tragedies, they're learning. It's something to learn, a learning skill of life. I grew up with an incredible entrepreneurial family that came up against many, many obstacles. But what made it different was we were taught and learnt this at a young age. There are no obstacles of life, but new opportunities and new probabilities. As one door shuts, another door opens. We all have our own story. We can sit and be a victim to our stories, or we can learn to be the successor and grow from our stories to be able to pour into other people, lift them up, but live the life of the abundance that we were really actually brought here on earth to do. If you constantly think about your past and woe is me and throw your you know, toys out the pram, 
you will constantly be stuck because going back and back and back doesn't really get you very far apart from living in your past and being stuck. If you move into your future and you're constantly thinking about, you know, what I can do here, it will become unmanageable to you. So live in the abundance that you're alive on a daily basis, that magic is everywhere. You can make a choice. It's very simple. Happiness is a choice. You can make a choice to be happy for the day or you can make the choice to be miserable. For me, my choice is to live in happiness, abundance, blessings and if a huge wave comes at me I will never allow myself to go under that wave but I will ride it and live in the teaching and the blessing of that day. I really felt I needed to say that. Adore you all and I'm Eleni. Thank you Eleni and I think the key word there is choice. Uh, Glenn, uh, he has left uh, for the day, but um, good luck to him and thank you very much, Glenn. If you can hear me, <laughs> I am sending a thank you to you. Uh, you know, choice is so important. That six letter word is that we have the choice to decide how we feel. And really it is our choice. Um, I'm gonna move over, Rania, are you with us, Rania? Rania, if you're there, can you unmute your microphone? All right, Rania is not with us at the moment. Um, Trevon, is it Trevon or Tre? Uh, how do I pronounce your name? Trev? Greetings, Paul. You could just call me Trey for short. You got it. Welcome. And over to you, sir. Greetings, greetings. I like what you just said, Paul. You know, uh, it is definitely a choice. You know, I like to see it as a... I like to say is you either a victor or you a victim. Now, provided we all go through the victim stage, you know, uh, we all experience our lows. We all experience moments of depression, you know, moments of doubt, uh, moments of sadness. You know, that's a part of the human nature. That's a part of the growing experience. But at the same time, you know, uh, if a lot of us, feel that we have no power over the situations in life because we have no control over ourselves, then we are prone to feel those emotions for a prolonged uh, period of time. I'm a survivor of childhood bullying. I'm a survivor of domestic violence of four years, which I got out of November 27th, 2021. Uh, I pretty much endured a lot of stuff through that. I've been put through extreme mental abuse, verbal abuse, uh, physical abuse provided with hands and weapons. You know, I've also been through addiction, for, I mean, 15 year addiction of porn. And I've allowed myself for many years, I'm, 20, I'm 27 now, I've allowed myself for 26 years of my life to pretty much carry baggage from that. And I realize as I reflect on my life, because I feel like life is connected, everything you go through in life is connected. At least that's how I see my life. I see that I carry baggage on from my childhood uh, with the bullying and the bullying was connected to the addiction. The addiction was connected to the domestic violence. And throughout that point, I seen myself just accumulating. As I accumulated those events, I started becoming more, uh, more negative, more depressed, more upset, more hurt, more disoriented. And I started realizing that in order for me to grow, in order for me to get up out of those situations, I had to first accept that I was in a situation. Second, I had to forgive myself for what I didn't know. Because through all those situations, I found myself blaming myself, critiquing myself, uh, pretty much sabotaging myself. I had to realize that, you know what, uh, I, I have to treat myself better. I have to give myself everything that I expected in other people. I had to give myself the love, the, the affection, the attention, the admiration, the honor, you know, the dignity, the, the value, the worth. I had to provide all that. I found myself looking for years uh, in other people, which, you know, left me vulnerable to many of those situations. But now that I'm out of those situations, because I made the choice to no longer be a victim, but rather a victor. I'm at a point to where, you know, uh, <clears throat> I love myself. I respect myself. You know, I see myself as a young king. 
I've uh, made tremendous amounts of progress. I've pretty much recovered from a, a lot of my childhood trauma by myself. And I ain't even going to say by myself because it was pretty much the greater divinity of my ancestors leading me. So, you know, uh, I've recovered from a lot of my trauma. I no longer allow it to affect me. I've been through depression. I've been through si uh, suicidal ideation. I've been through pretty much severe depression. And now I'm stronger. You know, I see myself as evolved. And, you know, now I'm on the leap of faith doing what I got to do to thrive and to build myself up, continuing to improve my knowledge, to improve my, my wisdom, and to, you know, carry out my objective on this earth. With that being said, I'm going to leave it at there for now. I appreciate you, Paul. Thank you and blessings to all. Wow. Um, <laughs> where do I start with that? Thank you very much for that share. I love what you said about being a survivor, the choice to be a survivor. Uh, you also talked about acceptance. You, you became aware of your self-sabotage and you made a decision to forgive yourself, get out of that. And uh, I just love that. Young King, I, I certainly um, admire this, uh, what you've done. And it's just uh, beautiful. Anybody else want to uh, add anything to that? That was a, a real masterclass. I think it's uh, important that we become aware of the situations that we're in or what we're telling ourselves. And then uh, if we are making mistakes, it's all right to forgive ourselves and to become aware of that. Jacqueline, I saw you on mute. I just wanted to add in quickly and trade on our paths keep crossing, which I feel less from because I feel like I learned something different from your story each time. And what I really picked up from your story this time is how you've really gone back and traced from your addiction to your childhood trauma and you're putting all of those pieces together. And I think a lot of people sit in their trauma, they sit in their victimhood and they never actually go back and take a look at where it all started. And Dr. Roshnak talks about this and maybe you could tap into this as well, is how that programming from our childhood carries through our life, how we learn tactics to deal with it. You know, we hear more and more now um, through what we can learn. And Gab Armady talks about this as childhood trauma literally sets on ADHD in children just so that they can deal with what they're dealing with in their childhood. And so it gives them that opportunity as an escape. And you really took us through that whole process of how you're doing that. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Um, that, that, that was a powerful share, and thank you very much. I hope that you join us next week as well. Um, powerful story, my friend, and real a good example of how we can take control of our lives when they spin out of control. So thank you very much for that. And uh, I, uh, Dr. Roshnak, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, Trayvon, amazing as always, and very inspirational. I just wanted to note that we can help ourselves to a tremendous extent and understanding how that could happen uh, is very powerful and having examples of people who have done it is very powerful, but there's nothing wrong with, there's absolutely zero shame with, and I actually recommend it that if and when we need help from others, professional help, that's a good thing as well. Because as there was a question even in the chat, when we talked about ruminating thoughts and so on, and then there's um, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, there's obsessive compulsive disorder, there's um, ADHD, as Jacqueline was just saying, um, various and sundry ways in which our brains can become rewired and there are professionals who understand how to work with that and get us to where we want to go well and faster. So I just wanted to bring that spotlight to those of you who may perhaps feel shamed that you're not where others are, that you didn't get to that place. And to say that this is only for inspiration, that it's amazing to have that inspiration, but that's not to say that everyone's journey is the same. Some people go faster, slower, left, right. Nothing is linear. 
and you can't really know from the outside what anybody's going through. And so in order to not self-sabotage on your journey to living your best life, and every single day is your day, is your gift, and you don't know how much longer we have, that to be compassionate with yourself, to be understanding and supportive of yourself is the best way, is the best antidote, is the best prevention to self-sabotage. And so that everything that you hear today is supportive and inspirational, but not the only way and not the way it should be. Just want to bring that to the to the table, please. Wow. Really thank you. That. Yeah, thank you so much for that, uh, Dasha Roshanak. Beautiful, beautifully said. And uh, Trev, uh, thank you for coming up. And I hope that you will be with us next week. Real quick, and yeah, we we'll welcome you every week. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Michelle, I'm going to turn it over to you for a reset before we um, go to Rania. Absolutely, Paul. And thank you so much, Dr. Roshanak, for that. That was so illuminating and beautiful. Uh, Self-compassion is so key. And gratitude. Gratitude for the majesty that we come into life already existing as. Uh, and grateful for what has happened, what hasn't happened, uh, what, what, uh, what will happen. There's so much, um, I think, also in getting out of self-sabotage through starting to cultivate uh, a self-relationship with being in gratitude. So I wanted to put that on the table before I do the reset. And I want to say that we are so grateful for each person that's here today. Thank you so much for dropping into our room. This is the Take Control of Your Life Club. And if you haven't followed it yet, if you would do us the favor, uh, above mine and Kig's head, there's a little green clubhouse. And if you'll just pull down on the clubhouse, uh, uh, you can or click on that, you can join the Take Control of Your Life Club, and you'll be notified of this room and other rooms that we hold. Also, we are in the Negotiate Your Way Out of Self-Sabotage. This room was started over a year ago by King and Paul Nadeau. Uh, and I happened to find my way in here and decided I'm just never leaving. So they've been stuck with me. And I think the rest of the mods have similarly fallen in. And it's just been um, an absolute space of trust and trustworthiness. It's been a space of honor. And it's been a space where we really deeply listen to what people have to say. And we thank you who are in the listening lounge for listening deeply, for being understanding, for writing in the chat. And please do write in the chat and contribute because we can't bring everybody up on this stage. And as you'll notice, we tuck people back down into the audience. That's so it's easier for our mods to also take time to read your profile as you come to share on the stage because we do want to be able to um, have a whole a whole perception of you, and you already provide that with your profile. We ask that you have something written there, uh, and that you be connected to either Twitter or Instagram as a way for us to get in touch with you off this stage. Sometimes this stage opens up really deep bre breakthroughs for people, and sometimes people um, can use support. And us mods, we're really happy to be there for people. Uh, and so we ask that you connect through one of those two mediums. Uh, and if you do both of those things, we'll bring you up onto the stage. Um, when you're up on the stage, please feel free to share what's upon your heart or what's in your thoughts. Just know if you're going to mention something that's a trigger, that's something that if someone was in a sensitive place emotionally, that they heard about that topic, it might make them feel worse, that you would say before you start to share about that subject, hey, I may have something that may be a trigger here. It's something that's deeply emotional. And that gives people an opportunity to quietly leave the room for five minutes, take a stretch, get a glass of water, which I highly recommend you guys do because we always forget to drink something when we're in clubhouse and it's like being in a training. We want to take care of ourselves. Uh, and then those people who've stayed outside the room can come back in after five or six minutes. That gives you the opportunity to share what you need to share and have been accountable and responsible for creating the safe space that you need in order to ask your question or share your share. So we so appreciate all, um, all communication with us. Uh, we, and we are very 
careful to make sure that we keep this room on time. So with that, I'm just going to say, please invite some people into this room. Use that little square with the arrow. Invite them through the chat on the top of the stage. Someone's got an open mic. Invite them through the invite people. So those are people in your clubhouse group already. Um, please feel free to message people. We really want to keep a diverse uh, collection of empowering conversation going. And we can't do that if we don't have you guys uh, with all of your friends coming into the room. So once again, thank you. We totally honor you. Look around at people uh, who are in this room with you. Often uh, you'll find like minded individuals in a clubhouse room like this. It's a great place to build relationship. Also, please feel free to like any of the moderators that are resonating with you. They contribute their time and they're really not asking for anything back but connection. Uh, and so with that, I pass the mod mic back to you, Paul. Oh, thank you, Michelle. What a beautiful reset. And uh, yes, we're so glad that you joined us and that you stuck with us because <laughs> you always add such Beautiful, beautiful shares and, and just your heart. I just love it. So thank you very much for that. And uh, Rania, I'm going to try you again. Are you there? Yes. Um, can you we hear me? We can. Yes, we can. Oh, my goodness. Sorry about that. I know I've been trying to talk for a couple of times. For some reason, the mic wasn't working. So thank you so much. Um, I do want to just start by saying I love this room. Whenever I can make it, I, I, I make it a point to jump in. So thank you so much, Paul and King, for, for hosting this beautiful room. Um, and Paul, I have been reading your book. I think it is of so much value. There's so much wisdom in it. Um, I, uh, I've been just really fascinated, you know, by the mind and by the power of our mind. And um, I've you know, been learning more about, you know, neuroscience and seeing um, after there came a time when I kind of felt like I felt a little bit into a funk and I was having my negative thinking and I was feeling unhappy. I wanted to understand what that was all about because it just, I knew wasn't my nature. And, um, and so I started digging deeper into just learning how to take control, you know, what is it to help take control of, of my mind first, how to learn um, more about uh, observing and becoming more aware of, of how my thoughts were taking over. And, you know, when they're just like for this particular, you know, share, I just want to say, I've been, you know, I've been on my own journey and I've been um, getting deeper and deeper into into learning more about uh, about, you know, just imp self improvement and uh, and and seeing how to use how, how to use all this knowledge, you know, to uh, uh, really understand more human behavior. And I've been by profession more of a management consultant, but everything I do, you know, I do have to work with people and with people's fears and with people's doubts and uncertainties. So it's always been my my interest to begin with. Um, but one of the, you know, three things that I, this particular week, you know, I've really learned to look at, um, and it was because of my own experience of of having to deal with when, uh, yeah, um, I, I've been working with my own emotions uh, of of not allowing, you know, a diagnosis that was given to me to really take over my life, and uh, uh, it's kind of taken me into that direction of um, taking control of my health, being the same process of taking control of my my life, and learning what these language loops, these thought loops that happen when we are afraid, when we're told something, when, when something, you know, gives us doubt and automatically, you know, the mind goes to, well, what if, you know, fill in the blank, you know, something negative happens and, and then it kind of loops and loops and loops. And, and I've learned now to how to take that and say, well, what if up, you know, what if, what if a miracle happens? What if, what if, you know, I, I, I think of this differently and I take the loop to go to the opposite direction. And I realize how that really helps align my energy 
into more like my desire and my and and the love for my for life rather than the fear and i realized that all that power is happening in that moment in that moment in the now that if i think about the future that that's not going to help you know it's it's if it's going to be on on a fearful basis that's not going to help me and that really at the end of the day the future is never there it's because when we get there it's always in the now so as we keep if i keep we keep focusing on that we keep focusing on the now focusing on aligning that energy up to um you know the desire that we want and and put it in 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 a in a form of love and abundance and and it it everything changes and when that changes then you know the next moment changes and the next moment changes and the future changes and and i've been seeing a lot of progress doing that and i i just thought i would share that because i think there was so much conversation today around all those topics and um everybody who shared today was just spoke to me in such a big way and i just wanted to add that to it so with that i'll turn it back over to you paul oh rania what a beautiful share thank you so much you touched on oh gosh so much that i want to uh, to, to just kind of focus on you're right that this life is a journey and the journey is ours to really set it, it the path of our lives are up to us and you touched on choice the when you got a diagnosis um that was not good or whatever you chose to deal with that in a positive way and focusing on the now is so very important many people live in the past or live in the future what if you know when this happens i'll be happy when this happens everything will be okay and we miss the moment of now the power of now the power of choice to choose our feelings and to choose how we feel about ourselves so that was such a beautiful share does anybody any one of my moderators um king over to you yeah thank you so much paul and thank you ronnie for for joining us and i mean yeah i, I love what you said and i mean i know a little bit about the the you know the the journey that you've been on and i'm you know i'm just always in awe and amazed you know and, and you know once again i'm just oh, so inspired that as, as you, you know along your journey there were a lot of roadblocks that that you hit that you know i think you know most people would have just given up and i'm just you know i'm just so, always so inspired you know just you know the way that you handled it the way that you just didn't give up the way that you you know once again that instead of having you know sort of ex accepting it you decided you know what i'm going to try something else and you know what's you know at, at you know so you've always kept a very positive mindset about it all and it's just you know it's one of those things where you know we speak about sort of keep keeping positive and you know, staying positive but when you're the one in it when you're the one affected by it it really really is hard to do that and so um so yeah i just want to mention that that you know i'm you know it's so 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 great that uh, that you you have that uh, um positive mindset and that you've been able to do it and uh, i'm just so happy to hear thanks so much Ron. Rania. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I do believe that um, being around people like you and, and being around rooms like this is always so helpful. It's always such a reminder um, that that, uh, you know, life life is life is a choice. And as long as, you know, we are alive, we can make a choice to be happy regardless of what's going on. And I hope everyone remembers that because life is just so much more beautiful that way. It really is. And uh, again, I think if anything today, one of the words that we should carry with us from this conversation is choice. We have a choice. And Rania, really appreciate you being here. And that was a beautiful share. I hope that you join us again. Um, do any one of my moderators want to add anything more to this conversation? All right. Uh, oh, yes, Candice. Thank you, Paul. I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet. I just wanted to say, um, as it's already been said, Rania, thank you so much for the share. And the one piece I guess I just wanted to pick up on is I heard you mention the word fear a couple times and just wanted to recognize what a normal emotion that is. And I think it would re be remiss to say that, you know, all of us have 
had a fear or feel a fear towards something. And it's really understanding, you know, what the basis of the fear is. Sometimes it's the fear of the unknown or the fear that we don't know enough or what are the risks associated with the fear. Um, you know, some of us have had fear of failure or fear of being in different types of comfort zones. And so just appreciate that you brought that to light. And it is uh, very normal and very common, but then how we mitigate around it and, you know, what choices we make, as Paul said, about those fears is the step in, in moving forward. So thank you for talking about that and sharing that with us today. Yeah, thank you. Um, on the topic of fear, I want to also add the word courage because we all need courage in this in this life. And I'm, I'm going to go to Nelson Mandela's quote on courage and fear. And I think it's appropriate for this conversation. He said, courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. And the brave man is not he who does not feel fear, but he who conquers that fear. And it's so vital for us to step into our courage and know that we can challenge fear and we can move beyond it because some of the greatest things for us that lie, it lies on the other side of fear. And the moment that we step into our courage and just take the challenges of life and say, okay, I got this, many wonderful things happen. So thank you so much for that. And can, um, sorry, Rania, I hope that you come back uh, next week and share with us. Thank you so much, Paul. I will. Awesome. And I see that Dr. Norman has joined us. Dr. Norman, are you available to uh, give an introduction? And maybe not. We'll come back to Dr. Norman. I, I oh, yes. I am. Good. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, hi, everybody. Sorry I came late. I've been working. Um, wonderful to be here. And, Rania, I entered in the tail end of your speech, so I'm so sorry, but it sounds... So beautiful and so evolved. So I'm glad to have met you. Uh, I'm a, a clinical psychologist, and I I work with um, with chronic illness and and trauma and bereavement, uh, particularly in children and and families. Um, most of my work is is dealing with um, end of life issues and 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 how to survive after a life has ended here in this world. Uh, I teach a course uh, at a university in New York City on pastoral counseling, and I enjoy uh, writing books and, uh, and coming into these rooms. So thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of the, the second half of, of today's room. Thanks, Paul. Well, Dr. Norman, um, it's such a pleasure to have you here every week. And uh, the work that you do, outstanding. And if, if anybody here um, has not been following Dr. Norman on Instagram, Please do. He shares these wonderful, uh, is it 30-second uh, uh, videos or, or one-minute videos? It's, um, it's 60-second video, 60 seconds. Right, okay, so, thank you. Um, yeah, and they're just absolutely beautiful and full of information, so please do uh, follow him. And thank you very much for joining us. Um, Isaiah, are you available to speak? Yes. Welcome. Yes, I'm going to turn the microphone over to you, Isaiah. Do you have a share or a question? I just have a question. Uh, so I'm currently I'm still on a self-improvement uh, journey at the moment. And uh, one of the things that I've came up that I came across when I was speaking to a friend yesterday was he told me that I was that I kept on intellectual intellectualizing uh, things. Um, he kind of described it in a way that it's like I built a rigid algorithm about how things work, and it's not something that I can't let go, and it continues to give me suffering, and. Um, he also described it in a way that I see other people doing those things, but they don't have that algorithm, don't have that data. But it seems that things are working out for them, and um, it seems that it, it it seems effective for them. Uh, that's why I have difficulty uh, understanding 
things about especially very simple fundamental concepts um, that we talk a lot about here like success um, and love most especially about uh, love and uh, it seems that I just observe people I, I, I observe you know couples and families um, around me but um, it seems that I want to have that love that they are experiencing but it's just that I have my own concept of it that I could not let go and it seems that I was just the trying to observe people but I, I, I couldn't really do it myself and I want those things so badly but then it's like I don't have that um, I don't have the necessary tools and knowledge to handle that um, that concept or experience so I think that's where the, the intellectualizing um, comes from or I don't know what you what, what you call it maybe fantasizing you know it's like I'm fantasizing the, the good life that I want for myself but it's like I, I, I can't push myself because I felt that I don't really deserve or don't have the capacity to handle those things so uh, I'm not sure what you uh, what you think about it or if, if it's a uh, it it's some it's something that I that is you know sabotaging me or or, or, or other individuals so, yeah. uh, that's my question uh, thank you all right uh, Isaiah I'm, I'm trying to focus in on exactly what you're asking but um, number one I want to say that you do deserve to be happy you do deserve uh, everything in life and you do have the capacity and I don't know if any one of my moderators want to join on this conversation doctor yes dr. Norman Isaiah, I'm just, I'm very taken by your by your 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 share, and I want to ask you, in particular, from one thing you had said, you said you don't really uh, understand love, and I'd like to ask you what what do you make of love? What what is love to you, if you don't mind trying to give me an answer? Uh, to be honest, my from going to look at my life, my concept of love is, you know, as much as. I give people what they need, you know, um, in terms of knowledge, you know, as long as I answer the questions and um, I get the compliments that I, that I get compliments or good reviews or remarks about it, everything is fine. That's my concept of love that, um, that it needs to be changed. I, I am aware, but um, it's just so difficult to let go because that's how I survived. What do you think it needs to be changed to, Isaiah? Isaiah, are you there? Yes, um, actually, I, I'm, I, I don't have a, an answer at the top of my head at the moment. So I want, I want to ask you to imagine that the definition or the concept of love that you describe is very transactional, meaning to me anyway, it makes you a really, really great colleague and a really great employee, or as you know, you're studying industrial relations. But in terms of human relations, it's more than complimenting people and pleasing one another. It's also about recognizing what is beautiful about you on the inside and sharing that beauty with others who will benefit from it. It's about recognizing the existence of a higher power that comes between or exists between you and someone that is hopefully your partner who sees you in ways that nobody else does. It's about being vulnerable and about sharing what you don't love about yourself to discover that it's lovable regardless. It's not about complimenting or necessarily pleasing and making somebody else better. It's also about making yourself better in the presence of someone that really cares about you. There's a lot of self work to be done, Isaiah. And I know that because of the sweetness of the way you speak, I know you're capable of it. But it's not always about pleasing the other. It's also about pleasing yourself in the presence of someone who really, really gets you. 
And that starts with knowing yourself more and allowing that that vision of yourself to to be revealed to somebody else. It's delicate, it's beautiful, it's scary, and it's worth it. And I want you to think about that when you think about the concept of love. Thank you, Dr. Norman. Um, anyone else? Because Isaiah, you do have the capacity. And uh, Michelle, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, uh, Isaiah, you know, thank you so much, number one, for having the courage to come up uh, and, and wait on stage and wait with that question that you wanted to ask and tells me that there's a part of you that, you know, is yearning for this uh, or that is so curious about it that, you know, these people are saying this to you and, um, you know, not yet having found uh, the path inside yourself to find the answers. But the thing is, it, is, is, it isn't so much about an answer, you know, as, as Dr. Norman was saying, as it is allowing yourself to start to give to you. Um, because love, uh, the kind of love that I think that we all, all um, connect with comes from a connection point inside our own heart. And so just even, I would say, in the morning, uh, during the day and at night, to take some quiet moment to just go inward, to feel your heart, to feel your love, to feel that that feeling of, of let maybe it feels like tenderness. Maybe it feels um, a little bit uncomfortable but or vulnerable, but in that space, uh, you can you can feel that love that you so readily give to others uh, through the ways in which Dr. Norman was saying, you know, by answering people's questions, you know, that's what you've found maybe as one of your love languages. But to find it for yourself, answering the questions for yourself begins with being able to um, to start to do little things to nourish you, uh, and and it, uh, to me, it's always started with to nourish myself to just get in touch with my own heart inside myself for no reason other than that is an experience of the love I have within me. And from there, it's easy to take a small step. And it could be something, I think, I don't know if it was Dr. Roshnak was talking about journaling earlier, where, you know, even just writing a few things that you love about yourself, that when you're alone with yourself, you're happy with yourself for small, small wins. Um, you know, uh, just like small, small gifts to others opens others' hearts can open yours as well. And I think that, um, as Dr. Norman said, you know, there's a lot of deep work there. This is this is a life of work of 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 learning uh, to love ourselves, and. This is the first step uh, in breaking free of what I think is a self-sabotage that many of us fundamentally have, which is to, um, you know, to buy into that there's something to be fixed uh, uh, and to forget that we, we actually are beautiful and, and illuminated, extraordinary souls and finding our, our permission um, within ourselves to, to start to honor ourselves is one of the first huge massive steps in getting rid of self-sabotage. And so, you know, you're taking that step today. And one last thing I wanted to mention is I was taught by a mentor never to compare how I'm feeling inside with how others look outside. And um, to listen to my own uh, in inner uh, inner sense of self, <clears throat> and and you know, question: Am I am I am I asking myself questions that can lead to me discovering, uh, let's say, me discovering uh, places where I can grow? Or am I, you know, questioning myself uh, with questions that are disempowering? And so I think 
you know, that's another thing to realize is that we, we can't really always be comparing what others are thinking and saying and showing up as outside of ourselves, especially when we're first starting to find out who we really are. Um, and so with that, I'll hand the mod mic back to you, Paul, and thank you so much for coming and sharing, Isaiah. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Robert. Yeah, thank you, Paul. And uh, Eleni touched uh, just in passing on what I wanted to uh, unpack for you, Isaiah. Uh, but I'm going to begin by acknowledging, I think, uh, what Michelle did say about this being not only a first step, but a very, very important first step for you in your self-discovery. And what I wanted to talk about was that you shouldn't feel badly about how you feel, about how you receive love, because um, uh, what, what Michelle had talked about, uh, she had mentioned about a language of love. Well, in the 1990s, uh, Dr. Gary Chapman wrote a book called The Five Languages of Love. And the first language of love he talked about was words of affirmation. And that is a very valid way in which many of us receive love, you know, um, uh, of, of Dr. Chapman's five languages of love. That's one of my two, how I receive love, but how we, how others around us receive love may be different than how we receive love. And I can't begin to understand the complex psychological and cognitive interactions within us about what leads us to you know, gravitate towards, you know, this language of love or that language of love. But what I wanted to say to you, Isaiah, is don't feel badly that this is the way that you receive love, or at least maybe the principal way that, that you receive love and that you show love. Just be aware that others may receive love a bit differently than you. Uh, so, and so with that, uh, I think I just wanted to just uh, hand that back to Paul and, and just wish you all the best in your journey, Isaiah. Thank you, Robert. Um, King, did you want to add something? Yeah, I just want to add, um, Isaiah, um, just because you were speaking about how you think the way that you, you know, that, that you uh, give or receive love is not right. Um, and I mean, Robert and Michelle have already touched on that as well as, as did Dr. Norman. You shouldn't, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with the way, like from what I'm hearing in terms of, the, you know, what uh, Dr. Norman said, the transactional sort of uh, nature of how you give and receive love. There's nothing abnormal about that because it's very common, actually. Like, because when you were explaining a lot of things, I realized, like, especially like in the Asian culture, where we don't, you know, where a lot of people don't necessarily express uh, emotional sort of, um, sort of, they don't communicate emotionally as well with their love. They often, it's very common that's transactional. I mean, just the number of, you know, sort of, like, I just thought, even talking, you know, you know, even with myself, I realize like my parents aren't necessarily going to come and tell me they love me and all the other stuff like, a, you know, typical uh, sort of a parent in the Western world would do. But I realize over the years, it's things that are transactional. It's like they'll, you know, instead of telling me they love me, they'll bring me food or they'll, you know, ask me if, you know, if I need something or whatever. like it, it's very much like that. But often, you know, I realize that's how a lot of sort of people um, sort of from more traditional backgrounds often are that are uh, that don't necessarily um i mean it's you know likely that you know and i know like their my parents parents were like that as well and so it's you know there's nothing wrong with you know um you the, the the way that you give and receive it and if that's what makes you happy that what makes you happy if you're not hurting anyone else and there are other people out there like you that you know give and receive love that way as well so keep looking. I mean, you know, and once again, um, as Dr. Norman mentioned earlier too, like, you know, define what, what it is you're looking for. So that way you'll know, you know, how to let people know this is, you know, this is how, you know, I do it. Um, but people will recognize it. The people that's given, receive love the same way you do will recognize it as well. And um, once again, they may also, and they will, you know, I almost feel that they will be more sort of I, I acutely aware of, of of that with you because they themselves feel a little bit uncomfortable um, in sort of because it is you know you know probably in you know it is the the emotional way of expressing love or is probably a little bit more common uh, so they may also find themselves kind of isolated as well and I mean you know similar energies often vibrate and find each other so I mean don't you know once again you know just keep 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 on loving the way you do um and uh I, you know it'll happen so that's just what i want to add isaiah uh, i'm king i'm complete right over to yeah, michelle you know i wanted to add Thanks. something you know i started my self-love journey probably when i became or started to become conscious of back in 1995 
So I was, you know, I'm, cause I'm in my fifties. So I was in probably in my thirties then. And, um, you know, I real I, I tried all different kinds of routes. Right. And, and also during that time, just giving myself permission to be willing and have the courage to see who I was, because I still had sort of a, a funny sense of my self worth at that time. And one of the things that really helped me was I found someone like a Dr. Norman, who is like a specialist in 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 asking the right questions and asking great questions and, and in listening so they know those great questions to ask. And I actually had the best kind of relationship with that person. And um, they they asked questions I could never have thought of in a million years. So it opened up parts of myself that had been slumbering. Uh, just waiting for someone with the right question. It was like having a key to a door. And and so, you know, I highly recommend um, also seeking out um, like someone like a therapist uh, who is so trained and uh, to support people, to awaken their self-love, to reactivate their self-love. Uh, because I think that um, we're all manifest uh it, 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 with this incredible beauty that God has given us and um, and f- awakening to our own beauty uh, then radiates out onto others uh, in such a wonderful and powering way. And so I just felt I should add that. I forgot to add it at the end of my share. And with that, I'll pass it back to you, Paul. Wow. Um, thank you, Dr. Norman Robert. King and Michelle, what beautiful shares that you've given. Isaiah, um, you are, you're an amazing individual, and I think that you have to remind yourself of that every day. We all do. We have to take a few moments every day to just be grateful, number one, start our day off with gratitude for being here, and then to really talk to ourselves and lift ourselves up. It's that self-love. We, we have to recognize that we are deserving And Isaiah, you are deserving of love and you can give and express love in the way that you choose. And you can receive love in the way that you choose. And I think we have to start off by telling ourselves that we are deserving, that we are loving, and that we set our days off with an intention. And I admire your courage for coming up and your vulnerability, Isaiah. There's so much strength in you. And I think that you just need to scratch the surface of that to get through to yourself that you are a magnificent human being and that you are capable of love and receiving love. And uh, I just so admire you. So thank you very much for coming up. Um, Does anyone of my moderators want to add anything more to this conversation? So Isaiah, I'm going to give you a challenge. I would love for you to come back next week, but would you set your days off with intention and come up with a couple of mantras that you can tell yourself? Are you willing to do that, Isaiah? Yeah, I I, I can do that. Um, But uh, I I still have quite some doubts with with myself, especially if I, you know, see people uh, with, you know, with complete families or with my um with 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 with, with a lot of couples with, uh, with with children and all those things it kind of makes me question like um do still like do 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 i deserve those things or i'm just gonna be here you know alone answering questions of, of, of people well you do deserve them and uh, i think that you need to challenge your Um, your thoughts on that, because you need to dispute that. You are deserving of everything. And it's the way in which you talk to yourself. It, it, and this is why I want you every morning to start talking to yourself in a positive way by telling yourself that you deserve it just as anybody else deserves it, because nobody in this world, and this applies to everyone in this room, nobody in this world deserves love and happiness more than you not one person. And we need to remind ourselves that we are as deserving as anyone else. And not only that, we are as capable as anyone else to to get those things. And it is the way in which we talk to ourselves. I don't know if you've ever poured love, and I'm, I'm 
I'm imagining, Isaiah, that you have. I'm imagining that you've told a friend or that you supported a friend. You've told somebody in your life that you love them and that you respect them and that you honor them, whatever it is. Why not turn that over to you and tell yourself that you are deserving of love, that you are deserving of everything? Because the way in which sometimes we treat our friends better than we treat ourselves. And why is that? We should turn that love over to us and say, I am deserving, I am capable, and I am going to get this because I deserve it. I deserve the best out of life. Robert, I saw you on mute. Did you want to add something, bro? Just very, very quickly because others want to speak as well. Isaiah, Paul talked about, Paul mentioned, it's so true, that there's no one in this world who deserves love more than you do. And and the foundation of that statement is profound. The foundation of that statement is that each of us on the face of this planet has equal dignity. We all have that foundational dignity as a human being. And so because you have that dignity, that is kind of the ground on which you deserve love just like anyone else. And I'm reminded of a, of a verse in the, in the, uh, in, in the epistles, uh, New Testament epistles, um, about how I think it was St. Paul who said, um, uh, or maybe it was even the gospel that Jesus said. Anyhow, we said that, um, you know, we are to love others as we love ourselves. And so we begin by loving ourselves. And that's that's where you begin. I mean, just, you know, you're looking for affirmation, which is absolutely the right, you have every right to that. But start by recognizing that you have that fundamental human dignity and that you can and should be loving yourself fully. And Paul, that's all I wanted to add. Back to you. That was a beautiful share. Thank you. Um, Dr. Norman. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you, Paul. Isaiah, you ask a question. It's almost as if you asked it of us. Am I deserving? Do I deserve this? And I was so impelled to answer, but Paul beat me to it and said, absolutely you are, because I know you are and Paul knows you are. But the question really may have to be asked to somebody else, which is someone perhaps in your childhood, someone in your past that, that really has, a, has some kind of a hold in your memory. And you may want to take yourself to a dark, to a quite to a place where you were younger, and quietly ask that 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 caretaker, that that coach, that teacher, that parent, that important authoritarian figure, when you were little and helpless, am I deserving? And whatever the answer is, I want you to recognize your answer is yes. So there may be somebody that says, you're not deserving, not good enough. You have to have better grades. You didn't, you didn't do enough to help out around the house, etc. We do have parents that create a perilous world for us sometimes. And I want you to ask that question in your memory, in your heart. And I want your answer to be regardless of what that voice in your brain says. I want your heart to say, yes, this is my life. I'm writing the second chapter. My parents named me. And they started the narrative of my life, but I continue and complete the story with my own decisions. So therefore, yes, my name is Isaiah, and I am deserving. Practice it, please. We can tell you, but you got to tell you. Wow, that was beautiful. And it's so true. Isaiah, you have your homework uh, for the week, and we want you to come back next week. And uh, the Dr. Norman hit it on on the on the head. Is it I am deserving, Isaiah? You are. Um, ask yourself, who will you become when you release those negative thoughts and beliefs that you are holding on to? Who could you become? Because not all the thoughts that we have are true. Sometimes they're simply remnants, as Dr. Norman said, of the lies that we were told, or perhaps the messages, that, the negative messages that we received in our childhood. So we are deserving. We can challenge those negative beliefs and turn them around. And I, I believe that you have um, a gift in you. you. You are vulnerable. You are sharing. And that is a superpower, my friend. That is a superpower in Isaiah. Your challenge this week will be to start talking to yourself as though you love yourself deeply, because you should, and this is your superpower. I want you to come back, because the information that you've received here 
from our wonderful panel here is going to help you get to that level where you are are truly stepping into your greatness because you have that in you. And uh, thank you uh, for joining us, Isaiah. I certainly appreciate it. Are you willing to take that challenge and come back next week? Isaiah? Isaiah, are you there? <laughs> I hope he is. All right. Well, that is the challenge for Isaiah. And uh, thank you all for, uh, for sharing that. Um, it was wonderful. Uh, I think we need a room reset, King. What do you think? Sure. Um, yes. So thank you so much to everyone who has joined us for the Negotiate Your Way Out of Self-Sabotage Room. And uh, especially for everyone that's been here since uh, 11 a.m. when we first opened the room. And of course, this room does run every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And if you, it is hosted by the Take Control of Your Life Club. So if you aren't already a member of the club, tap the link above my head and become a member of the club. That way you'll be notified whenever this room uh, runs and also the other rooms that we run during the week as well. And of course, course um for now we've uh, turned off hand raising just to because we do try to keep these rooms at about two hours long just to be respectful of everyone's time but if you do you know have any thoughts that you want to share or any questions you can pop them into the room chat and uh, we will do our best to address them when we have an opportunity to do so but if you do want to speak we invite you to come back and join us next week and uh, raise up your hand as soon as possible and get yourself in the in the queue that way um you can uh, you can ask your question at that time and i do promise i thank everyone on stage for being so patient and i do promise that we will get to you um as soon as we can but uh you know uh, definitely i appreciate the patience and of course to everyone in the audience if you are you know loving the conversation and uh, if you think other people might be interested in it as well um you know share the you know the the room by uh you know using the little uh button at the bottom with these uh, the box and the arrow and uh, let everyone know you know how you know how, you know what uh, you know incredibleness is happening in this room and also of course if you know of anyone that might benefit from it as well ping them into the room as well so that they don't miss out on this but as well obviously we have the replays on as well so you can always share the uh, room with someone after the fact as well if they aren't able to make it and uh, that definitely helps us to uh, sort of you know grow the room a little bit as well and uh, to uh, uh, their microphone yes uh, helps helps us to get the word out there and to be able to uh, help as many people as we possibly can and um, of course the other thing I always say as well that uh, your time here on Clubhouse is shaped so much by the people in the rooms that you interact with so if you haven't already take a look around in the room and read everyone's bios and I would suggest you start with my amazing moderators up here on stage and if you see someone whose story resonates with yours give them a follow because obviously that will help enhance uh, the time that you have here on Clubhouse and um, you know if you're gonna be spending time here you might as well make it the best time you possibly can so like like I said, take a look around, you know, above you, below you, beside you, and take a look at everyone's, you know, bios and, uh, you know, make a new friend today. And obviously, um, if you do find someone that uh, connects with you, make sure that uh, you give them, you know, take a, take a look at them off platform as well, either on their Instagram or their Twitter. And that way you can uh, reach out to them additionally, get to know them a little bit better. Or also you can make sure that you don't lose contact with them for whatever reason should uh, Clubhouse not be around anymore, you'll still be able to find them on those other platforms as well. And um, one final thing I want to draw my attention or draw your attention to is I've pinned a link for the book A Heart of Wisdom that was written by Dr. Norman and uh, so definitely give that a check and as well if you look at the beautiful cover art there that was created by our very own Eleni uh, who's uh, a moderator up here on stage with us and so uh, definitely give that um, a check that uh, book out if you haven't already it's absolutely amazing and with that I'll pass back over to Paul. Thank you Kane. And uh, yes, thank you everyone uh, for uh, joining us again and uh, for this wonderful, beautiful conversation that we're having today. I'm going to go right over to Mirza. Mirza, how are you? Welcome. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Paul, and love and respect from New York City. Uh, thank you for creating such a wonderful, safe space, a conducive, a nurturing environment that foster growth, uh, growth for everyone. I, I never knew you, you had written the book. I'm going to I'm I'm gonna take a look at it. I've been a fan of yours. I've been following you for quite some time in a, on a clubhouse, and um, and that topic uh, caught my attention, and um, <clears throat> I've been survivor of that, and uh, and I was so enjoying um, the 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 thought leaders and 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 that amazing conversation. 
um <clears throat> it reminds me of uh, when you were saying it's all about the conversation that we have in our brain because fundamental foundational ingredient of everything is our thought thought becomes thing thoughts are the frequency they are the vibration thoughts are the sentences in our brain that create a paragraph and that paragraph can you create an our narrative a narrative creates a story if you change that story we change our life we change our desired outcome because the same conversation that we have in our brain in our mind it can make us or it can break us it can be empowering it can be disempowering it can make you strongly mental or mentally strong it can give us endless hope or hopeless end and it can take you to the pit of your life or peak of your life and it's all about the choice and choice and decisions are the most powerful thing that we consciously exercise every morning it's just like taking shower you don't take shower once and you're done for your life you have to constantly step into your power you have to constantly you and i brothers and sisters we have to constantly rewire reframe recondition repercept reparadigm shift repatterns over patterns of existence because i think dr um i think michelle was saying or dr rosh uh roshanak was saying that um the one who's able to control his past he's able to control his present and now one who's able to control his present he's able to build and predict the future because yesterday was history tomorrow is a mystery don't let it define you yesterday was history tomorrow is a mystery be in the moment own the moment seize the moment own your now there's the power of now so that's where that like living in the present moment that's where you create the delineation and einstein says it so beautifully that a mind cannot solve the problem at the same level of consciousness at the same level of thinking that has created the problem originally right so you got to see the situation from a bird's eye view you got to see the situation from a, as a third person and you have to analyze your situation and that good gives you utmost control because you are the overseer you're the permitter you're the observer there's something called the heisenberg principle of uncertainty in quantum physics that talks about their collapsing wave particles in this universe wherever you put the observer upon that becomes real our conversation our thoughts are exactly the same thing 60 to 70 thoughts wherever we put the observer upon it becomes real and it's easy to say than done it requires a lot of deep work it locked uh, yeah it requires you and me to go back to the night seek the sight in that night turn on the light and fight like a warrior like a gladiator not like a warrior not like a victim be a victor of our life and go back to childhood traumas and dramas and self sabotaging suppressed identity and baggages and limiting beliefs that are holding us hostage in a jail cell in a prison cell in a cage cell of our mind we need to break those bars and shackles and overcome and become like cocoon to butterfly that all that negativity and all the darkness was part of us it was here it was in there for us to propel to overcome and become metamorphism from larva in order for us to be a diamond we have to first learn to be pearl like from coal to graphite and from graphite to diamond so much deaths and rebirth i'm speaking metaphorically but never give up on the future impossible version of you the key is the path to hell island and heaven island is basically within you and bible says something so beautifully that you shall know them by their fruits and fruits are the results of your life and if there's a problem with the fruit you go back to the root and root is the same hey, thing mirza mirza i'm just going to um going to ask you to land uh, your your plane for a bit but uh, what a master class um love what you're saying and it's so very very true about uh, just taking control of things and and the choice so thank you so much for that share um really appreciate that does anyone else want to add anything Okay, well thank you so much for that. Uh Michelle, did you want to add something? I wanted to thank Mirza cuz that was absolutely beautiful and powerful and uh I just I really appreciated your perspective on all of it. I can't wait for you to come back next week and continue. We're just running out of time, so thank you. Yes, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh uh, yes, respect. love and respect, my friend. Thank you so much. And Denise, uh welcome. Hi everyone. Hello um Paul, th thank you and King and all the moderators in the room just giving you greetings. Um thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. Um I 
I mean, I'm kind of conscious of the time. I know you, you, you know, you've you said you want you want to bring the room to a close. So, oh, don't I'm worry quite... about that. Just go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite <laughs> conscious of that. Um, you know, the 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 topic first of all is something that's really dear to my heart because, um, you know, anyone that's ever self sabotaged, um, anyone that's ever um, kind of found themselves in that wet in that place knows the pain. Um, it's not some. It's not a place that we really intentionally want to go, um, but we find ourselves in that place, and it's it it robs us of so much, and the pain, the tears, the angst. Um, it's real, and I I was really hoping to be able to share something that I felt would help Isaiah. It's a shame that he he left him because I I really know what that feels like when you're almost self loathing you know, you're in that place and you want to get out of it and you're finding it difficult to. And I have shared before my kind of like experience of, um, you know, uh, sat in the um, seven years old, sat in the assembly or hall at school and the head teacher inviting us all up to come to um, to audition for the choir. And I, I jump up as soon as he says he says that gives us that um, invitation, I jump up and go to the front. But when I get there, I've forgotten that I'm a child that is used to being seen and not heard. So when he gets to me and he says, um, it's my turn to sing, I'm, stu I'm stood there with, with my finger in the side of my mouth um, trying to get the sound out and finding it difficult. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like working myself up to get the sound out because I really want to sing. And then he suddenly says to me, go and sit down because we can't have children who sing with their fingers in their mouths. And I, I slivered back into the hole that I'd left in between my classmates. And that was really the end of my ambition, really, to join the school choir. But it was also what shaped my attitude as I went throughout life. Um, a, you know, a girl that could not speak, a, you know, a teenager that was afraid to go for what she wanted. Um, just really hiding myself behind life until I got so fed up, the frustration inside, the desire that I really wanted to, um, I wanted to become a writer. And I, um, and then I read a book. I read a book and the book made me see that I didn't have to put up with the, the, the kind of, um, you know, examples, the, the, the stereotypes, the things that were expected of me by outside forces. I didn't have to put up with that. I could choose something different. And there's that word choice. I could choose something different. And that started me on a different journey of really going for what I wanted. And yet still, I sabotaged myself all the way. So many opportunities that I just, you know, kind of like let pass by. I would hide, um, you know, given the uh, open doors to do things and I would hide. And, and until I got fed up of that as well. And I was sat there one day, um, writing in my journal, um, asking myself, why is it that I struggle like this to, to make my voice heard? And then that scenario um, of me in the assembly hall with the head teacher, Mr. Gable, um, that came back to my memory. And I, and I wondered, I asked myself, why did I stand up that day? What was it that, what possessed me to stand up that day in that assembly hall. And then the penny dropped um, that it was me. It was me that made myself stand up. It was the real me. It was the me that does go for things, the thing, the me that is bold and, you know, um, that can express herself. And at that point, I heard this voice come up out of my belly really loud. It wasn't planned, it just came up and just said, no, Mr. Gable, I will not sit down. I just heard that me, you know, my, my that, that voice coming up. No, Mr. Gable, I will not sit down. Speaking to that head teacher. And you know, this this is to, it's a hot mic somewhere. Um, this has sort of like started me on this journey and um, you know, with 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 growth, with personal development and growth, because as I said, I read that book and it showed me that I didn't have to put up with those things. I could change, and yet still, I wasn't changing. I was reading these self-help books and positive thinking books for years, and I still wasn't, I'm not seeing the kind of changes that I wanted to, I'm still hiding. And then I realized that the power really is in the stretch and the rest. 
when we're going through difficulties, when we're going through things that we're afraid of, things that make us uncomfortable, things that challenge us, you know, scary things that require us to step up. Yes, um, Denise. Yeah. We, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stop you a little bit there. Sorry, but, right. Thank no, you. that's okay. That's okay. Uh, because when we get into this mode we can talk forever but i love what you said about just challenging uh, that that voice from the past and saying no you stepped into your power and it doesn't matter how many books we read or um, how many motivational talks that we we listen to because that's not enough we have to take action and what you talked about was taking that action and turning things around it's not enough to to hear the messages. What we need to do is take those messages and turn them around and use the action and the power within us. So thank you so much for that wonderful share. It was beautiful. Um, anyone from of my moderators want to add to that? All right. Thank you, Denise. Really appreciate that. What a powerful story. And thank you so much. Um, we are down to our last speaker, and it's Cherish. Welcome, Cherish. <sighs> Hi, Paul. My name's Cherish, like you said, and I live in northern Canada, so like right next to Alaska. I just wanted to really thank you for this room today. Uh, when I joined earlier, you were talking about what self-sabotage is, and I was just thinking like, oh no, I feel stuck in so many of those situations. Um, but I'm still successful. And there were so many things that your moderators touched on. Um, I hit the bell for you, Michelle, and Dr. Oh, where did she go? Dr. Rajaj, I think her name is. Roshnak, yes. Roshnak, thank you. Um, and what I wanted to share was just, I was here and Travon was really sharing his trauma. And so I was thinking about like, where does self-sabotage come from and your moderators talked a lot about um you know when you're a child and we really need to find forgiveness for the things that we experienced when we were children because we often hold a lot of those self-limiting beliefs from those early childhood formations of and experiences that we have um so you talked a lot about self-love as well and I just pointed out, uh, like Robert said, there's five love languages. There's words of affirmation, physical touch, giving and receiving gifts. Um, oh, sorry, I put them in the chat. <laughs> um, physical touch, words of affirmation, giving and receiving gifts, acts of service, and quality time. Um, so regardless of what happened to you when you were a child, um, you have to forgive yourself for those experiences, you know, like our trauma is not our fault, but our healing is our responsibility. And I'm really fortunate that I was able to see um, a psychologist for 12 years. Um, she really helped me find my voice and start advocating for myself more for, you know, that my feelings are valid. I try and remember, you know, that when I'm feeling kind of down, that my feelings are valid and that, you know, nine out of 10 people would be feeling the same way that I am and to just honor your feelings and where you're at and not to get stuck there in the past, but just to give it recognition for what your triggers might be as an adult. Um, some things that really helped me uh, was looking at adverse childhood effects. Uh, there's a study, you can find it on the CDC um, and looking at, um, the, yeah, the Adverse Childhood Effects or ACEs study, and also looking at attachment theory. You know, I learned that I probably have a mis, uh, avoidant dismissive attachment. Um, and I really have a lot of pride that I was able to break the cycle of intergenerational trauma. Um, trigger warning. Last week, um, my clan leaders from Atlan, British Columbia, uh, they just got back from Rome on Monday night and they went for the papal apology. In Canada, we were looking for the Pope to apologize uh, for the Catholic Rolls Church um, in, in residential schools. And so, you know, my mother really struggled. Not only was she a residential school survivor, but she was also 60 scoop. 
and I was also 60 scoop. My husband's 60 scoop. I was raised by three residential school survivors, and graves should never be attached to schools. That's part of the trauma and the complex PTSD that I experience as an Indigenous person, and I'm aware of that. But I'm just really grateful, you know, that today I'm strong, I'm healthy. Um, I was able to break the cycle of intergenerational trauma, and my kids don't know anything about childhood abuse. You know, that feels really good to know that um, I found forgiveness for my parents and the things that I experienced, and our wellness and our healing is a journey. You know, like just like uh, there's lifelong learning, there's lifelong healing. So I just really appreciate all of you, and um, thank you so much for having this room. Cherish, oh wow, thank you so much for that share. What a beautiful heart you have, and uh, you touched on so many uh, significant and important topics. Jacqueline, I saw that you unmuted. Did you want to add something? I just wanted to cherish, I'm also from Canada. Um, I am not Indigenous, but I wanted to truly recognize you for bringing that to the table. It's such, it's been such an important topic here in Canada and one that has caused so many generations of trauma and healing that needs to go on. So I first wanna celebrate you for recognizing that and stopping it with the next generation because that is long time deep um, trauma that's been going on for the indigenous people of Canada. And as much as it was a big milestone that the Pope finally recognized that, it doesn't mean that it stops the generations of damage that it's done. So I wanted to publicly, publicly just recognize you for that and celebrate the fact that you're understanding you can stop it and you can change, you can change the generation with your children. And that takes a lot. I'm a mother of three adopted children from the Ministry of Children and Family Services here in Canada and they may or may not be Indigenous. We haven't had them tested as of yet but what we know is that generational and the epigenetics now proves it over and over again that that generational trauma um, continues and I'm trying to do the same with my kids. I'm trying to stop the train and the generations and we've tested it back seven generations now of, uh, of addiction for them. And it's not easy, but I really wanted to celebrate the fact that you're even aware of that, that you have the knowledge of that, and you're working towards making that change. And I think we can look at that in so many cultures all over the world, is how do we now stop what we know? And I, I wish Roshanak was here as well, um, but I know Dr. Norman will have a lot to say on this one too, is what we know can stop, but it takes the work and the awareness. So I wanted to celebrate and thank you for bringing that up and um, just sending you so much love in this moment um, for, 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 for all of the Indigenous people that have suffered so much. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Dr. Norman, did you want to add something? Oh, perhaps Dr. Norman stepped away. Cherish, thank you so much for joining. Oh, um, I actually there? didn't step away. I just have a hard time with the button. Yeah, thank you, Jacqueline. And I just, I wanted to thank you, Cherish. You, you sound like someone who is clearly wise to the experiences in your life that have shaped you and made you who you are. Um, I just hope that you continue to share the wisdom that you've gained because you can help a lot of us with, um, from, from, from the lived experience you have a you have a lot to share thank you thank you very much dr norman and cherish i hope that you join us again um really appreciate what you shared here today and thank you for just for expressing what you have and a lot of times we have to go back into our past and just say you know it's not our fault you know what happens to us sometimes from the abuses or the things that are said to us it's not our fault as kids we just it's not our fault and there was a beautiful movie with uh, matt damon and oh gosh i uh, can't think of the title right now in which uh, you know he was abused as a child and uh it well, was hunting, my friend paul what 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 is it jeremy good well hunting that's it yeah yeah that's it that's right 
And uh, there's a beautiful scene in that movie in which um, Robin Williams, uh, you know, speaks to him and just reminds him that what happened to him in the past was not his fault. And uh, it's just a beautiful film. Cherish, uh, love your name, and, and uh, I'm Canadian as well. And what part of Canada are you in? I live in Whitehorse, Yukon, <laughs> but I go part of it. Wow, okay. What's the weather like there? We still have tons of snow. Um, we had flooding last year, but we got more snow this year. So I'm kind of worried about people who live close to the uh, lakes and stuff. Um, but yeah, again, Paul and Michelle, and hello, fellow Canadians. Like, I was just so happy to be in this room today. You guys hit so many great points. I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that you gave just such great advice to. You know, like talking about the importance of, you know, setting mantras and setting positive words to say to yourself every day. Well, thank you, Cherish, and uh, I hope that you join us every week. Uh, you have so much to share with us, and we'd love to have you back. And thank you so much, everyone. Um, I am going to ask my moderators, uh, Do does anyone have anything that they would want to add before we close the room? It's been such a, a great conversation here today. Um, unmute if you have anything that you would like to share. All right, so we're going to close the room. I just want to remind everybody the importance of examining our narratives. And we've heard here today that some narratives need to be challenged. And it is those negative narr narratives that need to be challenged. Is what you're telling yourself outdated? Do you need to make changes? And nothing will change. Uh, nothing will change unless you apply action to it. There's a saying that says, nothing changes if nothing changes. So if you leave your narratives unchallenged, it won't change. How we see ourselves is so important. What we tell ourselves is so important. As I said a little bit earlier to uh, Isaiah, um, who would you become if you released that negative belief of yourself or um, didn't challenge those negative thoughts? Because not everything that uh, we experience needs to be bad. We can change that around. And so I wanna thank each and every one of my moderators here today for joining us and uh, for sharing your love and uh, your support to everyone and to everyone who has come on stage here today. Thank you very much for your vulnerability and for your wonderful shares. I have learned so much in this room. I'm so glad that we have the replays on because these are rooms that I go back to myself and listen to because there's such great value in what has been said here and what has been shared here. So thank you very much. And to everyone who has joined us as listeners and who has back-channeled the messages, I thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, you have just created such a, a great space for us by being here, and so thank you. And I want to, uh, again, invite everybody to join us next week and uh, to share in this and to our speakers who have joined us here today um, thank you very much i'm going to just close the room uh, if we can unmute and uh, just say our goodbyes i'm going to end the room in about uh, five or so seconds so thank you have a blessed weekend everybody thank you everyone, everyone. Love you, Lenny. Goodbye. 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 all right thank you Bye for now. enriching my life Take today care, you're amazing michelle forget you Love you all. Love you more. <laughs>Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for another insightful episode. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and leave your comments. For more information, check out our website at www.inspireus.ca. Remember, it's not what happens to us that matters most. It's how we respond to what happens to us that does. Stay strong and resilient.